All right, here we are getting ready for uh, the new movie. And the opening, by the way, is... Friday. Friday. It's Friday Hashtag Rio 2. Friday, Friday the 11th. Yes, indeed. Carlos Sandana? Yes. There we go. There we go. Uh, you, got it. you got it. Who is the uh, director? Sergio Mendez is on this project with you? Yes, he is. He is. You know, he's been in the first one as well. Like uh, We started musically just to work together, you know, because... I can't imagine somebody better for for this project because, you know, with since like Brazil '66, with mm-hmm. all his like music, he worked with every single artist out there, like from Frank Sinatra to Pharrell and to exactly Will I Am. and everything in between. Um, That's amazing. How did you and Sergio? ever come together well I, I wanted to make this movie and I wanted to have a, you know a fun Brazilian flavor to it and, and I wanted to have also a contemporary feel to it and I felt like who would know both worlds and, and that was Sergio and that's how I, I contacted him I pitched the story he fell in love and then we became best friends that's so cool so you wrote and directed the first Rio and this one as well where did the idea kind of start from because was there some sort of inspirational moment or was it just something that you always kind of had in the back of your mind back of your mind and then you were finally able to put the idea to paper yeah well it, it's I had a, like a, the idea of been living here for a long time and, and then I had the idea about sharing a little bit of my culture you know and just sharing a little bit of that side of the world you know you've seen movies done about France about China it's like we're not about Brazil like I have great music mm-hmm. we got great colors great characters you know uh, it would be fun to do it that's how it all started and but the original idea actually was about a penguin that came to Rio so that's how it all <laughs> that inspiration came like like that but you know I didn't. I, I had to get rid of the penguin. There was too many penguin movies. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody hit that idea yeah, once. Kill penguin, kill yeah. the penguin. Yeah, let's just put the birds back. <laughs> so as you're putting these ideas, I always find these uh, these movies interesting because when you're writing this, do you have particular voices in mind for which direction you want to go? And then on top of that, do you present that to who the ultimate deciding factors are? Like, do you have this person in mind, this person in mind, and this person in mind for this character? And then that's your top three, or, or, or yeah. It well, doesn't usually, come together, like, or? it works both ways. Sometimes I, I, when I write a character, I have somebody specifically in mind. For example, Nigel, I had like Jermaine Clement in mind because okay. of the Flight of the Concords. I was a right. huge fan mm-hmm. of the show, <laughs> the HBO show, yeah. and I, I want him. I want that kind of vibe. I want that character. So I had that in mind, and so luckily he said yes. Right. And I, that works out great. But sometimes, like you, you don't have an actor yet. So I have like a, you know, we create a profile of the of each character, and then we find which which guy would be the best one to, to do the job. And then we have a list of three or four, and you have your top top one, and you try to see if they want to do it. You know? That's really awesome. So in an interesting interview, it was uh, Jimmy Fallon, and who was it? It was a comedian and, he was talking to. Oh, yeah. And they were talking about, and the guy's telling Fallon, he's saying, you got to get into the animated stuff, because yeah. that's where the money is. Talking oh, really? about being, oh, wow, wow. <laughs> Talking about being a character voice. He goes, because right. once you get in one movie, I wish I could remember the guy's name, but he goes, then you become the character for each of the follow-up movies, and he goes, it's the easiest work in the world when you're doing it. It is It is fun. It's like, you know, we work on this for like three years, but throughout the the, year, the the three years, we record the actors many times, but it's only for a few hours and, you know, here and there. So total, for example, somebody like Jesse, maybe we record him about 10 times. Mm-hmm. Uh, but through the, you know, the, 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 the uh, in two years that we're making the movie. So it's just you come in, you know. No makeup, no need to get ready for the set and anything. It's very like much like this, you know, very relaxed. Yeah. Just talking about things, ad libbing and exploring, reading the script together. So it's really a fun, collaborate and and, and easygoing process. What got you into it? Because it's interesting how you know you would start like <laughs> real movies first, or it's the animated thing really well, out started, of the bug. I started with animation. Like I really wanted to be an animator. Like I was in Brazil and I I, I had a computer science degree actually, and then I was kind of like thinking that there was something missing, and I was very artistic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I said, like, why can't I combine the two things? And then when I found out about the School of Visual Arts in New York, uh, they had a program about computer animation. I thought, that, that sounds intriguing. Let's check it out. So I kind of, like, left everything back home, yeah. got married, came to the U.S., just went to school, and that's how it all started. I started to animate cartoons and have fun with it. That's a great success story. Now, you said you have four kids. How old are they? Are they, like, of the age this movie appeals to? Yeah, definitely. Like, yeah, my older one is 16, and then I have uh, Sophia that's 13, and I have Julia that's that's six, and then I have Raphael. That's for the boy, the last one. Yeah. And are uh, any of them movie critics by nature? Yes, <laughs> no. yeah. you know it's funny because like some of them, like my older one, Manuela, that she we um, like she she was two when um, 
uh, three, I think, when Ice Age came out. So uh, they're all part of the process. They've seen my, you know, I've been doing movies for the past 20 years. So it's just kind of like they've seen the growth of, uh, of, of, of the industry. They've seen my projects. And sometimes I bring stuff to show them. And, and, and sometimes they say, I like it. Or sometimes right. they say, like, nah, not, not good. All right, you know, kids, so. everybody bring a friend <laughs> for a sleepover. Yeah, exactly. We're going to order some popcorn. Let's do a little, you know, we'll call we'll it a screening. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, a screening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah everybody stay awake. Come on. Any, uh, any of the kids, though, have the uh, aspirations like you? They want to get into what you do? I don't know. So far, no. Yeah. yeah so far, no. <laughs> you know, but uh, I don't know. I still have the little ones there. I haven't made up their minds yet, so we'll see what happens. What's it like after you put a movie together, like Ice Age, and uh, you go to the theater? Yeah. Nobody knows who you are in the theater what are you watching as far as the group what are you looking for watching the reactions you know it's kind of like nerve-wracking it's just kind of like exposing yourself you know sometimes you feel like you're naked in front of a crowd you know just like you're just like oh what's gonna happen you know (laughs) but you know it's fun it's very rewarding when you see the reactions and when you see people enjoying it and having a good time so it's just really it's really great but i i usually i do it once but then i don't do it again i just i kind of like i I get too nervous (laughs) i just decided just to wait so when you're, say you're in a test screen and like there's a joke that you, that you really like that's in the movie or, mm. or something happens that you particularly like that's in the movie and every time you're waiting for that reaction, you, you're, you're maybe not getting the exact reaction that you, that you want. Do you, do you go back? Can you, can you, can you yeah. go back and change those things? And how much like punch up is done? Like, do you write a joke and then you realize, all right, that's not really going to stick. And then like, what is that process? Like, like how easy is it to fix what's already done? Sometimes it's totally doable. Uh, if, if you, if you see early enough in the process, because these movies takes a long time to make. So you do have a checkpoint or you just show it, uh, you know, show to a, a test audience. When you're about 60% done with the movie, you okay. show it. And then if something comes up there and it's kind of like fairly easy to fix, we usually go back and try to fix it. This, we always punching it up because, Part of these movies about comedy is about like not only comedy for kids but comedy for adults as right. well. So you want to just to get both worlds in there. So sometimes and, and sometimes like for example Bruno Mars like we I we recorded him and I didn't have an opening I had a, just an open dialogue for him and we said like let's experiment with music. What if you your opening number is musical? You sing this kind of almost serenade to to Jewel and and he went out for about an hour. He wrote the song and he just sang a cappella right there in the recording booth and it was amazing it was great yeah. and then I showed around people were laughing they loved it and it was great but then I had him back in my head like can we do more can we just keep pushing it and just right, keep going right. on and on and on and and then I, I went back to him and we already had animated it was like beautiful perfect and I went back to him and just says like you know can you we do a little bit more can you just keep going and like riffing on it and just really pushing it you're just really you know the character is really like going through the for the ego and then he just went and it just kept going going on yeah. and then I went back and reanimated so it made it much funnier so how hard is that though to tell Bruno Mars like hey this could probably be a little bit better. I'm sure you're very nice yeah, about it but no, just it's, like it's just Ugh. like that just right. the way I talk to you I just said hey hey man like, Bruno that got, sucked no, <laughs> yeah, no yeah, actually yeah, yeah. it was so good I said yeah. like it's already so good let's make it better you know yeah. like and I think we can make it better and then he's, he's, so, he's such a perfectionist he's such a good artist you know that that allows me to like even like to be on top of my game too like I have just to really right. give him the good stuff so he can yeah. do even better and usually he pluses it you know so that's in general like you know these guys the team that we have not only musical team and then the, the the actors and all that they are all like the top notch you know so right. you, I have to try to be top notch too <laughs> <you know? laughs> Rio 2 opening on Friday Carlos thanks for joining us today thank you thank you appreciate like, it yours. thank you guys it's just a I think you should go for it the Zoo Balloon's coming back the Channel 6 yeah. Zoo hey! Balloon is coming back <laughs> by popular demand now you know what happened to it the old one little snow